Good morning. I'm here with uh, Vikram Devecha, who is one of our artists in the Through the Mesh exhibition at uh, Neem Art Center in Limassol. And an interesting thing is I'm talking to him from the United Arab Emirates, and I am now actually in Limassol myself. Um, so what we're showing, actually, uh, Vikram is um, originally from Mumbai. Um, he has um, a number of distinguished credentials, including uh, an MFA from uh, uh, Columbia University in New York. He's currently teaching at American University of Sharjah in Sharjah, and he has been in many biennials, including the Venice, uh, the Kochi, and, and the um, Sharjah. And he deals a lot with aspects of, um, I'd say, inter in, in, intervention in um, social systems in, in the human environment and, uh, you know, that deal with various aspects of uh, sociology, anthropology, power, these things, these sorts of things that we'll talk about today. And, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's actually my, that's my interpretation. In the, in the show, he has a uh, piece called um, Sweeping that he did for um, the Shard Art Foundation. And um, we'll talk about that a bit, but um, yeah, would you mind? Would you mind just maybe going just a little bit over your practice in a broader sense than I, than I have? Because I mean, really, the granularity that I've put in is you know doesn't do it doesn't do it, um, it doesn't do it service, and uh, and then we can start getting into you know some of the work. Sure. Hey, Patrick. Uh, glad to be here, and uh, once again, thank you for having me in your show. I wish I could be there in person. Um, and yeah, um, to add to what you were saying, you know, a lot of my work has been rooted, rooted within uh, the urban space. Uh, it possibly emerged from this approach of thinking about you know, the city as my studio and trying to work with the questions, uh, large, some of them which dealt with uh, I, uh, the concerns of labor, value, and time. How can I uh, address these questions firsthand um, and that became possible by having this approach, uh, which I started to call as found processes, where I try to work with uh, available space and material and skill sets or labor. And uh, th that opened up these questions uh, or, or direction of a practice, uh, which invited uh, participants uh, who then also became guiding factors in the making of the works. Um, and my inquiries have taken me to work with uh, warehousing managers, uh, working with municipal gardeners who have a background in farming. Um, I've worked with rock blasting engineers. I'm working with a few architects right now. Uh, so, so the uh, city offers you diverse, you know, um, uh, possibilities. Um, and uh, yeah, I've shaped that approach uh, largely in the UAE where my art practice began. Why don't why don't we why don't we why don't we talk a bit about uh, the work that's in in the show sweeping? Sure. Um, so I'm going to share my screen um, so people can have a look. Up. Great. Uh, is this visible? Yes. Okay. So sweeping is a, a work from 2016. Um, and that was part of March projects commissioned by Sharjah Foundation. Um, and uh, essentially this work uh, was an intervention um, as, well as, a, as well as a performance um, by uh, five sweepers uh, who I engaged with um, over a few months uh, or more than that before we arrived at uh, this work. Let me just go to the background. Um, mm -hmm. This work was uh, performed in a neighborhood called Al Shuen, uh, which is where largely the Sharjah Foundation and the Sharjah Museum uh, is located. And uh, if you see this, can you see my cursor out here? Yeah. So yeah, this is the, the, the Sharjah Museum building and these different ballpoint uh, directional uh, the lines, you know, in green and pink and yellow and red and 
and such in blue. Uh, these uh, denote the paths of uh, city sweepers. And that's where the title comes from. Um, there are a lot of South Asian sweepers uh, in the UAE who work within the maintenance department of the city. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, they are given a designated path, uh, which they circle at least around three to four times during their um, eight hour or however long the shift is. Um, and that had been an interest of me, this ritual of cleansing um, mm. that you constantly uh, notice in the city. It's, 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 a, uh, it's, it's a very physical labor and, and um, each, each sweeper you know, repeats a specific part um, a few times and they have a broom and uh, a long broom and they have a, a trash bag within which they collect their work. So one aspect about my, my practice is that since I can speak the language, I often um, engage in these uh, conversations and informal approaches, um, sorry, to get to know uh, the sweepers and uh, invite them to possibly, possibly participate in, in thinking about a project or uh, thinking about you know, uh, doing something artistic and often uh, there's confusion about what is my role out here. You know, they wonder, am I uh, somebody from the municipality? Am I a, I also work with gardeners and they think about me as some landscaping person or someone from agriculture, but it takes me a while to establish the relationship that I'm an artist and I want to make an inquiry and work with them. And, uh, and after the invitation, um, you know, we, we got formal permissions to work with them. Uh, because I would want, I always want to work with them during their work hours while their duty is going on. And uh, I spent almost two to three months um, uh, walking. So there were five sweepers that I engaged in, in this project, and I and I began uh, accompanying them uh, during their uh, daily, uh, you know, uh, work routine of of walking around this neighborhood and. Uh, going about you know what they do and how they collect trash you know how they engage with the neighborhood um you know their stops uh, their their encounters their overlaps um so it was a study and and again uh, because of my ability to speak the language you know it becomes you know um uh, not just a place for product producing art but it also becomes um hopefully a place for reflection um, mm. I think that's that's something that's you know um, I feel important in the work because on one hand uh, you often have a lot of labor into any sort of art production you know and I've I've done other works as well which are large scale and ambition or sculptural or monumental but often um, in, in, like any other artist you know that that, that production um, and the labor that involves you know, to achieve those results often gets you know sidelined or it's never noticed right because you always see this final object but to come back uh, to what i was trying to uh, point at is that in my engagement and, and processes and development phase i hopefully introduce you know a different idea of time for them which is not you know result oriented it is not time as value and we need to produce something um, but how can we just reflect upon you know uh, what is going on over here and sometimes you know i succeed sometimes i don't but that period of engagement alters you know uh, something between uh myself and and and, and the sweeper in this case uh, a, a group of sweepers who actually all would work independently and and slowly i also would assemble them during their lunch break so we all would even exchange notes and such and so while that developed, uh, also what was very, uh, which, which what really came through is this neighborhood is a very, um, you know, it's like a very, you know, quotidian, uh, busy yeah. neighborhood. Um, a lot of shops, small shops and, and, and uh, dense apartment buildings with, with uh, largely a mixed community, but, you know, a lot of expat community out here. and. I believe some people work downstairs and some people live upstairs and 
a lot of pedestrian traffic, a lot of pedestrians as well. Um, and this neighborhood it completely uh, is offset by um, the museum building, which is mm -hmm. in the center, right? So this is the wall of the museum building. And this is a dense, it's just a large building, I would say it's maybe, um, so this is that Sharjah Museum building, and I would say it must be at least uh, maybe 80 meters in length with a few small openings. Mm -hmm. And this is a public institution, right? Um, but however, there isn't, um, there's a lot of effort made from the institution, but there isn't enough of, you know, um, uh, 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 movement of traffic between the, the public that lives in the neighborhood and this institution. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very clear, you know, um, and the, the divide comes across as you spend time over here. Right. So uh, for the project, eventually, um, um, and, and slowly as I started working with them, I also get to know the immediate supervisors and I get to know the, the sector area manager and such. And then they all also get curious about who is this person? Like, what is he doing? They have questions for me. Of what kind of art do you want to produce? Um, and so I, 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 and I spend time developing these projects, you know, uh, uh, investing time at least getting to know, you know, what's happening out there. Uh, and, and slowly I, I got hold of these sector maps and I realized that each one has a path which is actually mapped out onto this map that you're seeing over here. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the idea emerged that um, how do we make an encounter between uh, this neighborhood and the institution, right? That was mm -hmm. a, a simple way of thinking about it. And, uh, and this question about what is dirt, you know, and, I think it's Mary Douglas who spoke about who had this uh, who has this book which thinks about like dirt and waste and she has this beautiful quote uh, which says uh, dirt is matter out of place right and 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 mm -hmm. this question of how do you then you know highlight this trash and what does it mean so essentially the intervention uh, and maybe we should have started the talk with this is yeah. that uh, along with these sweepers I changed uh, we changed the path ever so slightly. So each path was slightly reconfigured or remapped. And so like this is, I know this location belongs to a sweeper called Kayum, mm. and he would end somewhere out here. But instead, like every time he finished, he went around this building and he would dump his trash bag in front of the museum door, mm. right? And yeah. so would all the other sweepers come every morning and start collecting or dropping their trash bags in a single line over here. Mm -hmm. And each sweeper almost would, uh, well, each sweeper would, would make four to five rounds during that period. So from 6 a.m. until 2 p.m., around 20 trash bags would line up in front of the museum door. Mm -hmm. It's almost a sort of encounter of with what would be thought about as you know a uh, pure space or sacred space and and and, and, the, and the neighborhood has sort of transpired through you know this collection of waste which also was an index of the habits and rituals of smoking or drinking mm. um, you know tea and paper cups um, and this became eventually they became performers in this piece where from for, I, this went on for almost three months, uh, I think from mid-November to uh, uh, a certain part of Feb. Um, and initially, and then we, of course, I mean, the way I work is I, I get all permission. So everyone is aware about what's going on. You don't want to brush people the wrong way because, you know, uh, but eventually the museum was like, why is this, you know, line of bags over here? And then they pushed it all the way to the end of, the sidewalk, but then we sort of brought it back again. So there was all this negotiation going on between the, the neighborhood and the institution and the uh, and the municipal body called BIA, which is a municipal, it's a, yeah. I think a subcontracted body called BIA. Um, but eventually they all realized that this is a work. Uh, it's an artwork, you know, it's, it's a line being drawn every day, it's reinscribed every day. Um, and we also choreographed the arrival of the large, uh, a truck which collects the trash. So at two o'clock, they would come and collect all of this 
and clean up that space. So next morning, a new line would be formed. Yeah. Um, so that's briefly um, uh, what the work is about. And this brief is a little more than brief. Mm -hmm. But I hope it allows people to sort of visualize, you know, from the work. Uh, this is a remapped uh, sure. routes. And this is like an image of one of the speakers called Kayu. And, you know, this is the kind of neighborhood he would walk through and then he would come uh, somewhere ahead and, uh, you know, dump the, the trash bag. Exactly. I mean, one, one other thing I think is very interesting is that, well, I mean, on one hand, I think this really um, illustrates the, you know, the, the notion of, you know, your in, in an intervention on systems. And the other thing is that, you know, in, in, in my studies and such, you know, a lot of you know, the systems approaches either from cybernetics or, um, you know, from um, uh, communication systems theory, like, uh, like Claude Shannon and the idea and the idea of, you know, um, you know, the the goal uh, the goal of a systems of a system of communication, whether it's social or whether it's informatic or whatnot, you know, is is the is the control of noise. And you know, so mm -hmm. in in one way, you know, you're it, as far as I'm concerned, you're kind of you know you're you're kind of playing with the the notion of noise within you know this 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 uh, urban system and um, you know attenuating it or not or watching this or or watching the existing system try to you know create and, you know, try to reestablish its own homeostasis and, you know, your, you know, um, reassertion of, of, of the new state, you know, and, and that sort of thing. And that kind of frisson that goes on between that. And then the thing I thought was very interesting is that eventually, you know, the, uh, the, the, the homeostatic state of the, of the city, you know, and, uh, and, and by the way, probably be uh, a good idea of, to mention that Bia is a yeah he has a, sub, a subcontract that deals with waste but also deals with recycling, um, mm -hmm. you know they they have a huge uh, re, you know reclamation center you know that uh, you know just has just these you know just these huge um, containers of everything from wood to rubber to however but I mean that's that's a bit of an aside but um, you know just. Uh, you know, I think another point that you make about this is I'm really sort of, you know, with the show, looking at the idea of, you know, physical systems where we would, you know, they're all human systems, but I mean, or they're all, you know, they're, they're all holistic systems of one form or another. But in, um, you know, um, material can also be considered as information. And in, um, and in the Middle East and such, you know, there, the, there are discourses of, of visibility you know, like the screen of the, the, the Arabic screen called the Mashrabiya and the, you know, and the idea of, you know, people wanting to see or not see one's material culture. And the one thing that you brought forth, you know, to me we, in, in our previous conversation about this was the notion that, you know, each of these bags was translucent, you know, and it, it, it allowed, it allowed the revelation of, you know, these various discourses of, of material culture, which I thought was very interesting. Um, yeah, uh, a few things I mean to respond to what you speak about earlier, but I'll come back to, yeah, I think your interest is in your interest in cybernetics and, 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 and electronic systems, if, I, if, if that's the right term. The one thing that really interests me in, in the idea of making interventions, you know, and kind of, and I make them within the sort of urban uh, structures, uh, they're quite organized and hierarchical, there's a lot of hierarchy in how they operate um, is is this idea of a simple idea of of, of short circuits. Um, mm -hmm. For me, that's that's something that you know um, is is like almost like the potential for a short circuit always exists, right? There's always these two nodes that are not meant to meet, but you know somebody needs to you know um, align them mm -hmm. and 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 and, uh, and that's creating and that also sort of creates a, uh, a certain form of noise, right? Which I think goes back to this idea of, of you know, uh, what is dirt? And I feel that, that there are so many, uh, like, I think the more we delve into this project, and at least I spent three months, you know, just walking with the sweepers. And, and that just, uh, but that part was so rich, I felt uh, that I feel that this summation of the project possibly 
almost a disservice to those months of walking. Um, mm. Because one aspect of that is, of course, highlighting, you know, um, these workers who are, are invisible, you know, they're almost part of, you know, the, the, they sort of blend into the landscape. And it's almost like with each repetition, they disappear rather than appear, you know, uh, uh, in each repetition they do of that, of the neighborhood every day sort of just makes them invisible over time. But but the the bags and oddly enough the bags were <coughs> this bright uh, green and it's only when this idea emerged that this can be a sculptural object, you know, um, and we started placing them on the floor, is when you realize that uh, that as they sort of you know uh, slump on the floor and, and and the collect inside pushes the walls, you know, the the translucent nature of the bag uh, becomes more evident. And often, like and most often, like you know, they would just sling the bag into this uh, metal skip out there. Uh, but in this case, uh, as we aligned them, it was the walk along with it just became this, you know, um, dense collection of images, mm -hmm. which oddly at that point even reflected on how um, Hassan Sharif's work, um, mm -hmm. you know, possibly behaves. He's uh, he, he was like the. the he, he was like a conceptual artist who worked with a lot of, you know, waste materials or very, very uh, uh, simple materials he picked up from a hardware store or grocery, such as flip flops or uh, magazines and such. Um, like a sur uh, surplus. Yeah, 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 intense amount of surplus. Um, and in fact, yeah, like this idea of consumption and waste and, and the ritual of consumption and waste, which is so. Uh, Intrinsic, intrinsic, intrinsic to living in any, any urban space today. Um, so clearly got visualized with this work. Uh, and also, I mean, I was very really aware about even how the sun behaved at a certain time because by two o'clock it was up. So it just became this image, which, which you know, um, which really uh, in some way brought the neighborhood almost at the doorstep of this place. And, and in fact, the, the, the material culture, I mean, there is a big change now, but this was 2016, you know, yeah. when the larger question about, you know, how do you deal with, with the environment and how do you be sustainable, that pressure wasn't there in all of us. You know, mm -hmm. and this really articulated that uh, fairly, in a fairly strong way. Yeah, there was actually it's very interesting is that uh, another artist in the uh, UAE sent me to a um, 1968 um, uh, documentary on uh, Sheikh Zayed and the changes coming to the UAE called uh, Farewell Arabia. Actually, it was quite interesting. So, and you know what I'm taking say you know three points of data you know, that are coming up in the conversation is that on one hand, what, what I saw was, you know, just the beginnings of, it was just, it was just a documentary on Abu Dhabi and Sheikh Zayed's life. You know, he had just come in, in power with Sheikh, uh, you know, instead of Sheikh uh, Shakput and starting to use the money to build, build, build the country, mm -hmm. which would then become the UAE. Um, and then, you know, talking about this, uh, uh, you know, kind of these notions of um, you know, where things are now. You know, it's, you know, with with where the United where the UAE is now, and then the other hand is that you know with these with these material practices. And I'm being a bit too imprecise, but oh, you know, uh, you know the the idea of you know the success story of the UAE. In other words, the you know the fame of Dubai and now the the World Expo, and then the idea of that you know that they're they're looking looking forward they're saying you know and really very concerned with the notion of sustainability how do you see how do you see things changing in the uae in the time that you've been there we've been there you've been there a couple years longer than i have uh, than i was and um but you i think you've probably been there about the same amount of time because you left for a little while while i, I remained etc but uh what what changes are you seeing and and how do you think that you can extrapolate you know through the lens that you see that 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 you see the human environment um, evolving in terms of the UAE? It's a very broad question. Um, yeah. 
It sort um, of is. But uh, yeah, let's see. Where, where do we start? I feel. I mean, de definitely there is there is uh, the desire to retain people. You know, there are longer visas now available. So that question of belonging, which on home, that you know, haunted a lot of people, uh, which also was very much part of, and it's still part. It continues to be part of, you know, uh, art practices and, and questions, very rooted questions about these are located in so many art practices is being addressed now, right? People yeah. are getting longer visas. And hence, I feel that the, the investment that you have in a place, you know, uh, expands, you know, it's, it's not like a short-term investment. No. Um, so I think that, that's like a, a bigger shift. And I feel like that's when possibly, you know, um, I think that's when, you, you know, you, I think that the sense of responsibility kind of, a sense of responsibility emerges when your investment in a place is long enough, mm. right? So mm. um, that just changes the equation in how you approach your every day, right? You yeah, know, because... or maybe, you know, this is the 50th anniversary of the UAE. Maybe the, maybe the UAE feels that it's created, you know, what we call in engineering terms, you know, um, you know, a sufficient state change. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I'm I'm using a bit of a double term here. You know, as a double player is to then, you know, considering you know whether you know whether that whether that new uh, point of you know homeostasis statusis or a you know a, a point of progress from which then you know they want to you know go forward. You know, is 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 sustained. Mm -hmm. You know the. What do you think? What do you think of that? I, does that make sense? Um, actually, I didn't follow you exactly. Can you repeat that again? Okay. No. In other words, so so say for example, there's in a, in an engineering term when you either like energy or or physics or something like that, it, it's like going from quantum state quantum states from one one quantum level of energy to another. You know, you got your you go through what they call you know a um, you know a, a state change. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, I'm I'm doing a little double play. You know, it's because you know the the UAE Abu Dhabi then becoming the UAE, you know, and the uh, and the other Emirates becoming the UAE. You know, is a large political state change. You know, but then the thing is, is that then the the notion of of life, you know, there and you know the community and home and all these sort of things has created you know a, a large state change. And and so, one hand mm -hmm. is that. You know, we're looking at possibly a, 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 you know, the sustainability of the human environment, a sustainability of the, you know, geopolitical, you know, change in the UAE, and then also the social, you know, the social change, which is, you know, a lot of what you're getting at. And in a moment, one thing I'd really like to get into is kind of like the notion of what you get into is the idea of entering the environment and really drilling down through the layers, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the administrative, the social, the, the, the built and all that sort of thing. I want to get it. But at the moment, you know, what I'm kind of looking at here is that now I think with the expo, you know, a, as kind of a, an index to all of this saying that, you know, we have come from the age of Zayed, you know, to where we are now as basically the pivot of the, you know, the, the Arabian world and um, saying that, you know, this is, you know, a position of state change, you know, that we have come to, that we want to have a sort of the next baseline as opposed to the baseline of life that Zayed had when they, when they struck oil, you know, mm -hmm. that they built from. And then this is the new baseline that we want to have, that we want to build our society from. And so the thing is, is that I don't know whether we're, I'm being too divergent, but, you know, what happens is that I see you examining you know, kind of these, you know, the, the system as kind of a baseline and then exploring it. But, you know, do you think, um, you know, this might be the case that the UAE at the 50th anniversary, you know, is now at a point, you know, where it sees itself, you know, in, in a, you know, in its next phase that it wants, it wants to build from? Yeah, um, I mean, definitely there is, you know, um... But I think that there has been, that there have been incremental shifts happening over the last decade. 
you know, and uh, and maybe they're not so visualized as much as a moment when you know you have the 50th, you know, anniversary. You have the expo. You can also be at a time of such immense pressure. You know, there's a big shift in technological shift and how you know the world is operating along with COVID. So yeah. I think this is this is like a, a a right moment for anyone and everyone, right? The computer is forced to 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 shift, right? So there is like a reshuffling. It's a forced reshuffling of, of you know what the future means. Alongside, I think UAE has always created images of the future, right? And and that sort of projection. You know, and then there are skeptics who kind of find it fictional, and there are people who, when they live here, like those, those, those certain of certain ideas uh, come through. You know, and and what I see now is that is that in that image of the future, which is fast, you know, arriving, people already are somehow part of the rendering. There are a lot more people in that rendering now. Yes, uh, and I think that that's. That's the way of thinking that to realize that or to even make that place alive, you know, you need a lot more players. And I think within that, uh, there are all these acts uh, that are opening up of how do you state claim, not uh, not just rightfully, but, you know, in terms of a future that doesn't belong to, uh, you know, a state, the future also belongs to communities. Yes. Right. And, and, and so... That, I mean, that's that's like the way I see it. So even for me, this work in some way or some of the works I've done with with certain gardeners in charge, again, there were these small even acts of claiming, right? That yes. here like you're highlighting this, you know, invisible uh, border between institution and, uh, you know, everyday neighborhood. You know, can this be blurred? Yeah. Can they be, can they be crossed over? And I feel like those, those borders are getting blurred because there's pressure from multiple sides to sort of, you know, invite and break in. And for me, that is, uh, that reshuffling is coming through multiple pressures, not just, you know, uh, of course there's a vision, but there's also other pressures, which is sh shaping the vision for all of us. Of course. Sh shaping everyone else's vision along with, you know, um, an ideal uh, idea of where we want to go. Sure, sure, sure. Is that... I think I have basically about two more little areas to draw into. And, and I'm once again, you know, kind of playing on words a little bit is that, um, is that this notion of cleaning and, you know, once again, I, and the one thing I, I I'm thinking about here is I'm almost thinking of, you know, the notion of dirt as being, you know, kind of accounted for, unaccounted for matter, the idea of almost like material noise, you know, and um, the, because the idea of to, to be without dirt is to be tidy and, you know, things are in order. And um, the first piece that I was familiar with from your, your work was um, that, and it was the first piece that I was ever taken willfully by anyone to see was boulder plot. Mm -hmm. um, and then, the thing is, is that, and I'm not necessarily talking so much about Boulder Plot itself, but one of the pieces that you had in the Venice Biennale, you know, that basically was kind of like a, you know, a, a secondary piece from it. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the cleaning piece related to Boulder Plot. And I was wondering whether, you, you know, you might mention the idea of, you know, Boulder Plot is kind of a comment commentary on the on the built environment. But then also, on the other hand, is that I'm, I'm curious kind of why you you decided to, you know, take the, uh, I'm a, if I remember correctly, the, the pieces from Boulder Plot was then involved in the, in the cleaning piece that was at, at, at the Venice, you know, and mm -hmm. which I, I found very serene and, and, and peaceful and, mm -hmm. you know, coming, coming one from the other, I thought was a, a really interesting discursive art. Yeah. Uh, interesting. You speak about like cleaning and cleansing. Yes, and 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 uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, this work is about that, and and uh, it takes me back to one of my conversations with uh, one of the sweepers. I think it was Kayum, and really reflect on this idea of you know uh, keeping a place uh, constantly clean, you know, uh, constantly uh, purifying it of that. There's effort to you know just 
evade any dust, you know, in this pristine space. And for him, it was actually an important uh, endeavor of hosting, right? That even if you want to host yourself or somebody arriving, you always want to clean that place. Mm. Um, and that's a mark of respect for the people you're going to receive. Mm -hmm. right? it's, and it's even a way yourself. Of, and yourself as well. So for, for, for and there was something in that idea about how uh, cleansing something was also meditative in, in terms of holding on to a, a, a sort of mental state, right? That you, you, you constantly have to, uh, you constantly have to restart, right? You constantly have to restart to retain a certain uh, state. And, and that's a form of, you know, uh, uh, in any form of practice where you want to attain a spiritual state, you have to, you know, uh, the repetition is an important form within that. Repetition is, is, a, is, is, uh, is like uh, the process through which you enter a higher, you know, a state of mind. And this is going too far out. But the, the, that understanding of cleansing uh, came to me um, through through my walks with the sweepers, and and it sort of, and I, and I totally agree with the idea that how involvement in a process and completely committing to it to do a job properly has its own uh, uh, fundamental uh, joy and value. Mm. That doesn't mean that you know, but, but then there's also a big issue with that because uh, <laughs> it just goes back or, to or or purity, or purity. yeah. But it, it, it even goes back to like certain Indian caste systems where like, you know, your caste decides what your work is and you must take mm. measure in that work sure. and not seek anything beyond that, which is why they have managed to retain, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a stratified society for, for, for centuries. Sure. Um, but for, for me, there's the, the, the idea of cleansing also then reflected with Boulder Plot. Uh, and very briefly for your viewers, Boulder Plot sure. was an installation composed of these massive uh, boulders, seven to eight tons each. There were around 24 boulders. And uh, that project came through me inquiring the mining, quarrying, industry, quarrying, mining and quarrying industry in the UAE, which part of the UAE is blessed with these uh, rock mountains and they blast these mountains to produce uh, 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 sort of uh, stones and uh, to, to make, put into concrete and make buildings. And so that the exhibition was of these giant boulders with these holes. And what happened was that in the process of the installation, uh, some of the boulders got messy and dirty because I was showing them within a large sand lot. Mm -hmm. And for the opening, I, 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 I and it's a very violent process of rock blasting, you know, yes. with, uh, with uh, explosives and uh, explosive powder. And, and it's a violent process I'd researched for months. And, and I was trying to uh, showcase that, that during just a few days before the opening, I was trying to clean my installation and make it, again, pure and pristine, mm -hmm. you know, to make a spectacle or a clean image. And we were struggling, how do we clean these boulders? Because all this sand was stuck on it and we couldn't brush it off. So one of the assistants just, you know, said, you know, there's like this water pipe out here, let's just hose them down. Mm -hmm. and, and I was really stressed out through all of this. and. Yep. Uh, and, and this person just started hosing down these giant boulders. And that was completely beautiful. Like I had no clue where that came from. It wasn't intentional, but it just hit me in many ways. It just sort of, mm -hmm. you know, I was just taken aback and I, I just filmed that and, and then just kept that away for a couple of years. I knew there's something to it. Sure. Um, and yeah, that was a very spiritual, I, I don't know the word spiritual is to, to um, you know, too far fetched, but there was some, there was a charge in that moment, you know, of, of, of these this water hitting these stones. There was sort of, as much as the cleansing was almost a form of, uh, of showing care towards these, these, these sort of, uh, and, and they sort of became like these forms, these boulders had these sort of holes, they became like these eyes, so they became these ravaged forms that had gone through a violent history, but the cleansing of them was 
the ritual of cleansing was quite seemed to have a healing feel to it and it mm. evoked ideas about how you cleanse yourself before prayers for wuzu or how you uh, coming back from where i come from like you know you you cleanse deity um, deities with 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 with, with uh, milk at times marble date you know idols with uh, milk and so there was a charge in that moment I, and i think we're digressing away from this um, oh. discussion but again that there was a certain it, it was a purity in in the everyday right like the cleansing is is trying to uh, not like spiritually uplift the space but the purity is that it brings is 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 is, is i feel uh, also considerate towards the community right so i think that's an important part to come back to this work where sure. uh, the the sweepers do sort of realize that you know that, that the space uh, i think at some point it, it will bother them if you know the place is not clean yes you know and and um, and that sort of endeavor to to you know deliver a space where people can uh, engage in a much more you know cleaner manner was uh, essential in in how they worked so i think to wrap it up but i have one one thing that i mm -hmm. think it's going to ground it into ground this into maybe the overall schema of the uh, of the exhibition so we you know we've talked about you know notions of layers and we we you know we've talked about you know the notion of cleanliness the uh, cleaning and 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 purification and such but the the one thing that you were mentioning as you were working on sweeping and i think this is a large part of the relevance i think of this you know this this piece to you know the the show is that is that um a number of writers from um you know galway hales and chun uh deal with this notion of, of of protocol as say for example uh you know a a layer of either communication transfer or just say for example you know one social set of uh, social protocol you can look at ones almost like protocols of, of of social protocols but also and the other one is that in the computer you have say for example the screen which then goes down to a level in which it abstracts itself into information which then abstracts itself into packets which go across then gets you know retranslated but the and i'm getting a bit abstract but what i want to de-abstract in saying this is that you know in in you're dealing with and i think a lot of your work is about uh, community, which uh, whether it's um, you know in in the in the in the built world or in the informatic world is is essential, is that you know a lot of your work you know you're dealing with say for example like you know the the built environment logistical systems and at the end of the day you know you're really kind of dealing with these protocolological layers of 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 people and you know the 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 and human systems you know it's like say for example you're you're meeting meeting and making these relationships with the workers and then you know going through their supervisors and then looking up at these things and then finding out that there are these you know there's these structures that are you know that define all these relationships and that sort of thing and a lot of the show is looking at all the dimensions in which kind of like you know from around the world um you know how the notion of conventional issues of social relations whether it's power whether it's information um i've been interested in the notion of you know how the power of the nation state intersects with that of what i'd say the information state like uh facebook and now called meta which is essentially an information informational nation state of three billion people how how this is how do you feel that or do you feel that the world is reconfiguring in terms of how the state social systems through even things like climate change and global warming and you know the information state you know are are reconfiguring things and does do you, do you feel that this is something that you're you're interested in? Maybe let's begin with you know. Sorry, go ahead. That, I'm sorry. That was another big question. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that's a big yeah. question. Yeah, I, I think let's begin with like, you know, just looking at this slide right now and, and the layers of uh, administrative work that, you know, uh, would entail the, the production of just a collection of waste and, 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 and you know, collection of it and, 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 and disposing it and, and maintaining, you know, uh, a certain clean neighborhood. Of course, it was a lot of you know, bureaucratic layers uh, that uh, I need to work through. And it's oddly enough, uh, like I grew up in, in Bombay, uh, and, and that's a place where you have to negotiate the city every day to get things mm -hmm. done. You know, I think that's where I sort of, yeah. I think that's where that, that uh, endeavor or spirit comes. Um, that, that, you know, like I, I sort of, I'm used to uh, negotiating with the city because the city itself is, is this very complex system and everybody wants to mold the city in sort of their, uh, uh, to their requirements. And, and when a city is difficult, you have to find ways to, to, to deal with it. Um, and, and I feel that's that that idea of, of human encounter is is for me a different idea of of you know um, uh, what does it mean to be within a uh, a social system, right? Mm -hmm. um, because uh, I, I think I think that it points to how I mean we all not not everyone has it smooth, right? Systems are not designed to facilitate. Most systems are not designed to facilitate smooth movement, no. you know, because they, they sort of uh, um, they they accrue uh, in a complex manner uh, because they are not like a single. It was not a single master plan designed to be navigated. Is is how uh, these systems accrue all these nodes and connections and become something much more bigger, right? And then we are we find ourselves within that. So even and that's why like if you look at like. Uh, when I look at Bombay um, and you look at the way the city is laid out, it's all these clumps of neighborhoods that kept adding on. Mm -hmm. And so as you navigate each neighborhood, there's different logic in how even the traffic moves and how the public moves and um, it just keeps altering. And maybe for me, uh, uh, those encounters are, make me feel involved, mm -hmm. you know? Like if I think about it, like, you know, um, Parts of Dubai are fairly structured, like right? other parts of how uh, parts of certain. I used to work in a corporate job, and it had a very specific repetitive order to be done, and so there was no. At times, there was no variation. Yes, and it's only through friction that you, and through like you know interaction and call and response, is that you become present. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's also how do you, uh, you know. Um, make yourself present within a given situation, you know, and the, at least I feel that is one way is through um, friction, right? And that's mm -hmm. when you, you, so you, and I, I don't think that, that it's not coming to all through the system, but it's mm -hmm. how do you choose to engage with the system, right? And mm -hmm. I feel like, I sometimes feel that the word intervention, like I, I don't know if I'm making interventions or I'm just engaging in a different way because the potential for 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 reconfiguring what can we do with this waste and the space and this uh, you know this manpower has always existed like that material is always there you know how do you reconfigure it uh, might not be encoded within the system but it is encoded right. within the system you know it is inherently it holds multiple potentials and that's when you expand the meaning of something right uh, and so I think you, that's just the way I, sorry? No, I was going to say, say, do you think that these expansions are me, of meaning are maybe ways in which maybe you, you, you know, you, you peer, you, in, in some ways, I, I feel like sometimes you pierce these, these layers in the system, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, you know, or, or, or at least go in the, go, you'll go, go across them in, in unexpected fashions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that, uh, but it's 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 it could be an unexpected fashion, but right. but uh, that potential always existed. Mm -hmm. So essentially, uh, a short circuit is not an accident. A short circuit is is an invisible layer of the system. Yeah, you know, and but it's then how you want to look at it. And I feel that's when you um, ever so slightly shift 
you know, how you deal with something. And, and those slightest shifts are for me the, the larger reconfigurations, yes. right? Um, yeah. And I think maybe that comes to like, you know, answering your, the latter part of your question is how do we look at uh, larger systems of, of, of change, changes and how, you know, sustainability is going to be questioned to how do we sort of, you know, um, think about, uh, you know, how AI is going to affect, you know, how, how do we navigate, you know, our future in the digital world. And, yeah. and, and, and I feel that these systems, you know, some of them are, are, are fairly fresh, some are not, but as they sediment, you know, and, 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 and stabilize in some way, and I don't know when that's going to happen, people will want to reconfigure that. Right. Right. On the other hand, there's a much more larger pressure on us to re reconfigure what does it mean to live and produce in a city? You know, like what, what are you contributing towards and what are you taking back and, and, and what fictions are you believing in? You know, like, I feel that there's going to be a big shift and that's a big shift right now, right? That the fictions we believe in are being yeah. reconfigured. Right. You know, and, and, and it is, uh, you know, a human inclination to, 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 to be disposed towards fiction, right? Yes. Uh, but, but, but the fictions are forcibly being changed now, you know, so the short circuits are happening. They are happening within ourselves as against within the system now, because we need to re reconfigure our ideas as against, uh, and, and, and that was sort of just a demand for a new system there. Right, right. It's uh, one one thing is that uh, my curatorial partner uh, Wade Wall Wal mm -hmm. Wallerstein was talking about the 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 notion of of reworlding. You know, in mm -hmm. other words, the idea of taking these potentialities, you know, that are coming about through either digital you know digital culture or or you know science fiction that's you know you know quite you know quite of interest now. It's a, and Bruce Sterling's idea that science fiction is just now near near future speculation because you know things have accelerated so much. Oh, and and Wade was also talking about the notion of fantasy. You know, in other words, mm -hmm. the idea of you know the idea of, of reworlding in science fiction as just you know an, a, a way of considering that you know the many of the existing um, you know methods of thought you know or paradigms you know look like they could potentially fail you know and so the the matter of saying then then how do we you know find new potentialities you know through these notions mm -hmm. of science fiction and reworlding and things and things like that and the one thing I think is also to me I think not in the, not in the necessary way of revolutionary but I think that your work is very um, radical in the idea of the etymology of the of, of the radix in other words the idea of you know the you know looking looking at the fundamental components you know of a situation or a milieu and considering them closely and this is yeah. one thing that i really like about the you know, this is one of the things i really respect about pieces like sweeping is that this is what you've done is that you've you know exhaustively gone through and examined you know the, the system and all you know, and uh, so, and you've decided to you know, to work with this one parameter and see how it affects the entire system and this is in in many ways i think um a necessary form of thought for the future mm -hmm. you know and this is the reason why i wanted this in the show great that's that's a beautiful thought yeah um, okay yeah how like one parameter affects the entire system yeah um, and to think yeah I, I feel like we can keep exp we can expand on this a lot more yeah um, but i think we're at a good point don't you think yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so anyway well vikram as, as always thanks thanks so much for taking the time you know and um you know this will be up and then you know we'll be in touch that this will be a uh the, this will be in a revised version in the uh, in the reader and so that's that's it along with this 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 stuff so anyway um okay. so formally i want to thank you for being part of the uh, part of the exhibition for this conversation thanks to you